Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Avi Levy. I'm from Synopsys. I'm an AE manager for the static products in Synopsys, so it's uh, Spyglass and VC Spyglass. And today I wanted to discuss with you our next generation platform for uh, Spyglass CEC with extended performance and features. So obviously, since we have uh, very limited time, I will go over um, a lot of things in high level, and I would very much uh, um, be happy if you guys enjoy um, join me in the demo that we have later, later on. So uh, in general, what do we have in the VC Spyglass platform? So as you can see on the right, we have all the apps that we used to have in Spyglass that we still have in Spyglass. By the way, the fact that we are migrating to a new platform doesn't mean that Spyglass is end of life or being deprecated, far from it. Spyglass is still being developed and enhanced and improved all the time. So uh, we have the Lint, the CDC, the RDC, LP, and SDC products. And SDC is essentially a constraint checker. The uh, compilation is done under the hood with VCS. So it's not VCS-like. It's not something similar. It's uh, VCS exactly. We have a unified setup with DC and Primetime, which I'm later going to show you. And the debug that we're doing with the GUI is done under the Verdi platform. So uh, let me go in to why we are migrating or why we thought we need the next generation. So there are, over the years, we found out that there are a few challenges that all of our customers encounter uh, when dealing with the static products. So one of them is the noise. There is quite a lot of noise in the static products that we wanted to reduce, that we wanted to eliminate. And this we have successfully done in the VC Spyglass platform as a whole in all our applications with the machine learning technology. I know machine learning is, is a buzzword, but um, it's a very nice technology and I'll discuss this later. The second thing and equally important is performance. Um, today, with all the relevant, all the uh, current tools today, the performance is, is not very good. I mean, we are having difficulties in running SOCs that are very large. The, the runtime is very uh, long, and that is, of course, under the assumption that you can read in your design and consume it. So um, that's why we've also improved our memory consumption. We've reduced it by half versus two other tools in the industry so that we are able to consume large designs and complete the runs in relatively reasonable times. The other thing that's very important in this platform is the compatibility to our other tools. So we, have, we are compatible with DC and with Primetime. And also, of course, we have the Spyglass compatibility mode, which is very important to our customers when migrating from Spyglass to VC Spyglass. So let me go in a little bit to the Spyglass compatibility mode. Today, most of our customers are still using Spyglass. And when coming to migrate for various reasons that I described before, they would like to have an easy migration. They don't want to start everything from scratch. They don't want to start writing their projects and their constraints. So we are allowing them in a push button to take their Spyglass project with the SGDC constraints, with the uh, project file and waiver files, and feed it into the VC Spyglass platform, and then get in the output the VC style um, reporting. So you can work in either one of two modes. Either you're taking the Spyglass uh, every time, the Spyglass project starting from it and going till the end, or you can do this one time, take the VC setup that's being generated, and from that moment on, start developing everything on top of that. And this is actually the preferred model we, we are uh, recommending customers to use in this model. The other compatibility that we have is like I described, uh, DC and PT. We are uh, seeing a lot of customers coming out of DC and prime time and wanting to share the setup with the static tools. So today we are allowing this. We are supporting native SDC commands. So you can use the search path, link library, analyze, elaborate all of that as is from DC and Primetime without needing to change your scripts. The other thing that we're supporting is the uh, tickle constructs that we have in DC and Primetime. So get pins, get ports, all sorts of collection functions that we have, we are supporting fully in VC Spyglass. Now, most importantly, 
is we are supporting the SDC constraints. That means that you don't have to change your prime time or DC constraints and adapt them to Spyglass. That's what we used to do in the past. Or if you're reading in an SDC to Spyglass, it would usually convert to SGDC style constraints and you would then be uh, left with the mismatch and, and adapting between clock domains and clock groups. So today we don't have that. Today we have native SDC, everything is clock groups. There are no more clock domains. Create clock, set clock groups, um, create generated clocks, all of that natively read by VC Spyglass. Like I mentioned, our debug is being done under Verdi. We've uh, experienced over the years with customers that they really enjoy working with Verdi and debugging under Verdi. So what we did is we took the best out of the both worlds. We took Verdi's schema uh, sorry, Spyglass schematic and Verdi's source browser and navigation, and we combined the two together. So we see very, very good feedback from customers when working with the combination of the two. And um, you are also welcome to view this in the demo that I will give later on. A new feature that we have in VC Spyglass is a new abstract model. In Spyglass, we use abstract models uh, when having performance issues with large SOCs. We wanted to generate the abstract model per block and then consume the abstract models at the SOC level. So essentially an SGDC abstract model is a constraint-based model that you uh, try to describe or the tool dumps a model that describes the interface of the block. So if there's a synchronizer, if there's a flop, if there's combinational logic, we use constraints to describe this. In VC Spyglass, we're doing a different thing. We've adopted the interface level module from our backend tools, and we call it SAM, sign off abstract model. And what we're doing there is we're cutting out the internals of the block and keeping only the interface level logic. So again, if you have a synchronizer, if you have a flop, the clock tree, all of these are being preserved by the tool. The tool dumps um, a binary model that you can later consume in the SOC runs. Now this is very important because A, it gives you uh, a lot more debug cap capabilities. No longer will you see a black box that stops when you get to the block. Here you can dwell into the block itself, see the interface level logic, and it will help you debug much easier. Second thing that you gain out of this is of course performance and capacity. You have reduced models, you don't need to run flat, and uh, runtime is uh, significantly reduced. And of course, the noise is eliminated since a lot of the internal logic is being taken out. We are also supporting consumption of the legacy Spyglass abstract model. So if you have third vendor IPs, third party IPs, sorry, and you have legacy IPs and IPs that you don't yet want to migrate to the SAM abstract model, what you can do is you can take their old SGDC type abstracts, combine them with the new SAM for other blocks that you are migrating, and then get a mix and match of everything in your SOC run. So it essentially gives you the flexibility to decide what is the pace in which you wanna migrate your blocks to VC Spyglass, and um, you can take this and do it in stages. Next thing, and a feature that was very, very much requested by our customers is the multi-mode feature. In Spyglass today, if you wanna run multiple modes, you have various functional modes that are described either by constraints or uh, by clock relationship and stuff like this. You need to run a different run for each of these modes. And then in order to debug, you need to debug each one independently. Now this is uh, quite a hassle and an overhead and you would uh, ideally wanna see everything in one GUI in one cockpit and one report. So this is what we've done in VC Spyglass. We've taken the parallel capabilities, the multi-core capabilities of VC Spyglass. And what we're doing is we're feeding different SDCs, which describe the different modes. So whether it's a set case analysis that's different or it's a, a clock relationship that's different, you're describing it in your SDC. Then you're taking all your SDCs with the same RTL, feeding everything into VC Spyglass. The processes, the modes are being ran in parallel and at the end, the results are being aggregated to one master database 
that you can that you can uh, debug from. So this is very helpful, uh, helps increase your productivity, and we recommend customers working with this mode. Another feature that I would like to discuss, which is very important in general when you're doing CDC verification, is the dynamic verification. So today, most of the customers are doing structural verification, which means they're taking their design and putting in structures to allow CDC um, safe CDC crossing, but they, they stop there, okay? So if they have a bus crossing or a qualifier or something like this, um, they verify that the structure is okay, that they have everything in place, but then they don't continue to check the dynamic part of it. And what do I mean by that? If, for example, you have a structure that you verified is okay, but you are synchronizing something from a fast domain to a slow domain, you need to make sure there is an assumption, a hidden assumption, that your source domain is being held long enough stable for your destination domain to sample. Now, this is something that you can only check by dynamic approach, either uh, VCS simulation or VC formal constraints, uh, sorry, assertions. So what we're doing here is we're generating a CDC database and a Jitter database, which is practically uh, assertions in some format that uh, VCS and VC formal can, can digest. And we dump this database and then we feed it into VCS for dynamic regressions, or if you guys want to, you can feed it into VC formal. And then if you have some violation of the dynamic protocol, you will get the assertion fired and you will be easily, you can easily go and debug and figure out what the problem is. Okay, so this is very important to utilize, very important to sign off your design with this dynamic approach. Now I've discussed uh, the root cause analysis, the machine learning feature at the beginning. And I said that we use this to reduce the noise. So how, how do we do that? I mean, in the high level, we take the RTL and constraints, we feed it into the static engine, which we normally do, but then we go beyond this and we take the results that we get, we would normally debug after the static run and we feed it into the machine learning engine. Okay, again, it sounds uh, like a buzzword, but it actually is an engine that does root cause analysis. And again, it's, it's under the hood. You don't have to do it yourself. Everything is done seamlessly. But then this machine learning engine tries to find common root causes that cause multiple violations. Okay, and then it clusters them together and it shows you a unique, uh, sorry, a unified root cause that if you fix that, will fix the other violations that you have. So instead of dealing with thousands or uh, hundreds of thousands of violations, you could be dealing with hundreds or thousands of violations depends on, depending on the size of your design. So let me give you a little example just to, uh, to illustrate. Uh, we found, uh, we taken one customer design as an example where we had 100 plus, 100K plus violations of unsynchronized crossings. And we've taken that and inserted that into our machine learning engine. We've ended up with 102 clusters. And then the, customers, the customer only needed to uh, validate those 102 violations and it would clean up most of the 100,000 violations. Now, let me give you an example of something that we know. Of course, it's a simple example. We have many, many other checks that we can do, many other clustering. So in this example, we see three clocks that are in the same physical path. One is being generated from the other, but those clocks are being defined as asynchronous to one another. Now, what we've seen is a lot of crossings between these th three clocks. And the tool then pointed it out and said, wait, I'm looking at your RTL. I'm seeing that the three clocks are in the same path, in the same physical path. I'm looking at your constraint and I'm seeing that it defines them as asynchronous. Are those really asynchronous clocks? Are you sure? And then the designer goes right to this um, root cause and checks the constraints and says, wait, you know what? Clock one and clock two are not actually asynchronous. They are synchronous. I will put them in the same group. So now you have different grouping, less asynchronous clocks, and of course, the amount of violations 
was significantly reduced. Okay, so this is a basic example of what we do. We can do much more uh, than this. Another thing that we have is a UPF aware CDC. A lot of the times customers would like to check their CDC in the presence of UPF cells, of isolation cells, level shifters, retention cells. Now this can only be done at the netlist level. But what if you don't want to run netlist CDC? What if you want to check this at the RTL level? So we've taken our uh, industry leading tool for uh, UPF checking, VCLP, and we've utilized its engines for UPF parsing and instrumentation to do the virtual instrumentation of the low power cells in your RTL. And now at this point, you can actually check your CDC in the presence of those virtual cells. So for example, if you have an isolation cell that can cause or can add other paths that weren't visible in RTL, and these are violating paths, that you would wanna see this, you would wanna fix this. Um, or the other way around, what if your isolation cell can be used and you intend to use it as a qualifier gating cell? So once you've put it in and you've defined your isolation as a qualifier, you can see that it actually cleans up some of your CDC violations. Okay, so it goes both ways. And that way you can do it at the RTL level, what you can do in gate level um, for sign off. The last thing I wanted to discuss, and this is related to the UPF instrumentation, is netlist CDC. Let's say you don't, it's not sufficient for you to do only the UPF instrumentation and check your CDC. Let's say you want to check all your net or your CDC over your netlist. Now, up until today, this was not possible. No CDC tool, including Spyglass, could read a netlist fully and run flat and verify the, uh, the structures at netlist. And you're asking, why do I need to do this? Well, the answer is simple. Um, the synthesis that you're doing might be different than what we're seeing in the pseudosynthesis done by all the static tools. So you want to make sure the synthesis difference doesn't introduce other bugs that were not visible at the RTL level. So what you can do is you can put your netlist into VC Spyglass, read it flat or hierarchical, and then do all the analysis with the GUI, with all the reporting, um, aligned to prime time um, settings. All of that you can put into VC Spyglass and read your, nat your netlist uh, natively and do your CDC debugging on that. And this is huge. This is something we weren't able to do. And uh, we are very happy to do it today with other customers. We've read uh, 1 billion plus gates design and successfully did sign off on it. <clears throat> so this is it. Uh, I really want to thank you for joining my presentation. And I really want to uh, ask you to join the demo where I will be showing how you use VC Spyglass, how you debug with VC Spyglass, how the GUI looks like, the SAM, how the, um, <clears throat> the machine learning looks like. So I will be very much happy if you guys can join me. Thank you very much.